and the laser arrived in this wooden crate by a DHL with no issues. Right on top of the package we have the breadboard for the laser. It's a nice big one with alternating thread holes. And here we see the main unit with the power supply and control board and then on the top there you see the Galvo and the UV laser source. This is not a fiber laser so taking care of the cables is not near as important. They're just in that protective wrap and they're just power cables and control cables for the Galvo the motor and the laser source. The motor is for the motorized tower which you will see here in a minute. But there's plenty of cabling so that you can set the split system on the floor or away from the source wherever you need to. And it's not a terribly heavy unit. Nothing like a CO2 Galvo which seems like it weighs a ton. Nice cardboard box of accessories. And then you'll see the motor mounted on top of that tower. So it does have a motorized Z. And it's in a nice protective cable chain. And it is the full 50 centimeter or 500 millimeter tower. And here we see the unit sitting on the counter. I have to take the plastic off and get all the goodies out, but we'll go through some of the goodies first. So that is a 300 millimeter lens inside of that box. It came with a 150 millimeter lens installed. And it also came with UV rated protective glasses. And once you get the plastic off, then you can start plugging in the cords. We have the foot pedal to plug in, a USB cable, and power cable. It does have a rotary port, but I did not need an additional rotary, so I did not get one with this unit. The first thing I'll do is set the tower roughly in place, and then I will go ahead and bolt the source onto the lift table of the tower. I'm not going to show that whole process. It's very straightforward the way the UV source is mounted to that base. The base just bolts right into the table on the tower. Nice cool tape measure included with the package. I was really happy about that because on the side of the Galvo head they have marked with lines how far you should be above your surface for the proper focal distance so you can use that tape measure and get started right away so there are some sample business cards easy cad on usb stick little toolkit hardware to finish assembly a couple guide bars jig bars as we call them So all you have to do is plug in the cables. There's one for the UV laser source. There is a power cable and a control cable. And then there's also a cable for the Z motor. All I have to do now is lift the UV laser source up, place it on the tower and get it screwed in. There's four screws that fasten it to the table on the tower then there's four four bolts that fasten the tower to the base get all those tightened down and then it was time to open up the usb drive files within the easycad uh, folders there are two of them one was for the 150 lens one was for the 300 so i opened up lightburn then in, uh, created the device 
imported the EasyCAD config for each lens and basically I was ready to roll and do the first test. Despite there being the configuration files for the UV laser on that USB drive, the timings were way off. So I did have to manually set my timings using the procedure in Geo's video. I'll link that in the description if you have a question about timing. But there you see the complete package for that split system. First burn was successful and I had to do a bowling ball. This was one of the things I wanted to see if a UV laser would be able to do. If you could engrave a bowling ball and then go back and fill it with clear epoxy and it did very well. I was impressed. The main takeaway from this engraving here will be obvious in just a moment. And that is to please be sure and wash your balls. You always want your balls clean whenever you're handling them. In case somebody else has to handle your balls as well, you want to make sure they are clean. Great job on the bowling ball. So, success for test one with the UV laser. I couldn't just stop at a bowling ball though. Had to do another test. And it tested a bowling pin. Then, Brad over at Five Axis Design turned me on to the ability to UV mark Crocs. My son was a Spider-Man fan, so I put a spider web on his white Crocs. And it did surprisingly well. I was really impressed. And he was very happy with them. So that was another great test of the UV laser. Now I was really surprised with the depth that it was able to reach and wrap around that curved surface on, that, on those Crocs. My son was really happy with his new to him Crocs, so happy that he decided to model them for me. So I grabbed a couple pictures and thought I'd throw them here in the video and you can see that they, tur they turned out pretty well. I was very happy. I also tested on a fox femur. So we do have a nicely engraved fox femur as a test. I did get the 300 millimeter lens installed and calibrated. This is 200 millimeter wide plywood. Made a little sign out of it. Got some nice detail, good burn. The UV is slow compared to a CO2 Galvo or a CO2 Gantry, but it did a great job on that 200 millimeter wide piece of wood. And I'm looking forward to trying out some larger pieces as we move forward in this UV laser adventure.